What companies are going to survive the changing world order? World-class companies. That's who. So if you're not a world-class company, then you're vulnerable. You're at risk. <laughs> the good news is that you can become a world-class company by doing the following things. And, and before I get into the following things, let me just share a case study, a story. Let's take Disney, for example, the Walt Disney Company. All right, so I, 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 if you look at the Walt Disney Company, you might be thinking, all right, well, it's a movie media company, right? Like, how can they truly be insulated versus whatever is going to come? Whatever shift in the world order, global economics, like, how can they be insulated from all that? Well, let me explain. Now, Disney used to be strictly a media company. You know, Walt Disney started to make movies and cartoons and things like that. And then we all know that Disney now has a lot of real estate, Walt Disneyland, and so they have, they have theme parks, they have cruise boats, all that kind of stuff. So they're in the hospitality business. And, and that provided more revenue streams, more layers of insulation. But what you might not know is that in the last 15 years, CEO Robert Iger has been a visionary and has seen the exposure of Disney in, in, on the global scale, right, in the, in the world markets, and has done a fantastic job at insulating the company against anything that's going to happen in the next 10 years. So 15 years ago, Robert Iger became CEO of Disney after working for Disney Company um, for a while and, um, and has been absolutely strategic in what he has done includes acquisition. Disney has grown amazingly through acquisition in the last 15 years. And who have they acquired? Let's take a look. Some of the you know, big things that they've acquired have been the Star Wars franchise. They bought that. And before, I mean, before they even bought Star Wars, they bought Pixar. So uh, they, Steve Jobs, you, you know he was the CEO of Apple, but what you might not know is that he also was the CEO of Pixar Animation. And so uh, they, Disney, under the leadership of Robert Iger, bought Pixar. Okay, and that added a lot of intellectual property, it added a lot of creativity and a lot of talent to the Disney brand. And then later they bought Star Wars, the, the, whole, um, the whole franchise, the whole legacy from George Lucas. Okay, and so then, then they own Star Wars now. Then they bought Marvel. All right, so now they own the Marvel series, all that sort of stuff. So they have this, you know, empire in the media space of content. Then what do they do? They say, you know what? We're, we're vulnerable, we're exposed because to get our media to the masses, we rely on other distribution channels like Netflix and like Hulu and, and other places, right? So they, um, what they did is they bought, well, they, they created Disney Plus. Right, and so in the last year, that's become extremely popular. Since I think it was 18 months ago that they launched Disney Plus, and uh, and so now they own their own distribution channel for all this media, and they started pulling their stuff off of Netflix, and whatever um, you know, whatever rights had already been guaranteed to other, like whatever wasn't on Netflix was basically on Hulu. Okay, so they're like, hmm, that's a problem. We want to own all of our distribution. So who owns Hulu? Comcast. So. Uh, they they invested in our owners so basically they own the distribution to Hulu as well you might not know this but like Disney built Disney Plus and whatever intellectual property whatever movies and media was already committed to someone else's on Hulu and now they they command Hulu <laughs> and so uh, they own basically all their distribution now on top of that they they bought 20th Century Fox and so they own you know, news sources, they own all the intellectual property for that media. Uh, they are just an absolute behemoth. They've grown through acquisition after acquisition after acquisition. And so part of what makes them world class is that they, they are a conglomerate now. They're not just media, they're distribution, they're real estate, they're hospitality, they're, you know, sure, something like Corona could happen and close all their theme parks and they're totally fine because it just boosts the membership in Disney Plus. Uh, and then they, they own, you know, they own software, like all the Pixar animations. I mean, they own lots of stuff. The, my point is, if you want to become world class, you need to insulate yourself versus anything that can happen. And part of that could be 
to grow through acquisitions. Okay, maybe you buy, maybe you buy suppliers, someone that you've been buying supplies from a long time, and uh, and so maybe you buy them out, or maybe you realize that your suppliers are in China, and that's a big risk if there's a a big conflict between the U.S. and China, even if it's not a hot war. Maybe it's just a trade conflict, and there's tariffs, and there's all kinds of hoops you got to jump through, and that puts a strain on your supply chain and how you do business. And so you say, let's move our production here, at least diversify it 50-50, so that we're not 100% reliant on Chinese production, Chinese manufacturing. So you got to think through like how how to be like Disney, and I'm not saying like be a media company, but think about like Disney recognized their exposure on distribution so they bought distribution or they created their own distribution so think through like who are your buyers who are your distributors is there a way to integrate them or to like set up some some sort of um, diversification there become world class now um, I so I hope that that's like I'm gonna release more of these case studies to help you understand how to become world class but I, I, wanted, I thought it was valuable to take a look at the Disney landscape and to help you think through how do I be more like them. So thanks for tuning in. Catch you on the flip side.